As you know, dome tweeters are designed to provide a very wide dispersion pattern, often resulting in significant room reflections. The good news is, there's a way to control the dispersion pattern at off-axis angles, without resorting to complex theories, electronics, or horns. This method involves a slight adjustment to the driver diaphragm, and the most significant changes happen above 10,000 Hz. Hi, welcome to my channel. Today, we're diving into an interesting topic regarding dome tweeters. Question is, can this part of the driver, the fixed dome at the center, create a noticeable difference in the driver's response? How can something seemingly small have such a big impact on everything? Well, let's find out. The central component of these tweeters or ring radiators is designed with either a concave or convex shape. However, I don't think the shape itself is the manufacturer's primary goal. What really matters is how the diaphragm moves. In this design, the central part remains fixed while the surrounding diaphragm moves. This type of movement can lead to improved directivity and extended frequency response up to 40 kHz. In some cases, lower distortion compared to traditional dome tweeters. It also shifts the diaphragm breakup to a higher frequency. The central part doesn't move. I should mention that phase plugs for woofers are a separate topic, and we'll cover them in another video. Earlier, we mentioned that a ring radiator provides better directivity. Now, let's test this with a real example. We'll compare a traditional dome tweeter with a ring radiator. In a dome tweeter, the entire diaphragm moves up and down as a single unit. For both the dome and the ring radiator, the maximum off-axis response is limited to 60 degrees. This is the response of the dome tweeter. As you know, greater reduction at off-axis angles means narrower directivity. Looking at the graph, the difference between the lower curve, or off-axis response, and the on-axis response is not very significant. This indicates that the dome tweeter has a wide directivity pattern. The ring radiator shows greater reduction at this angle, resulting in a more controlled directivity pattern especially above 10,000 Hz. This controlled directivity is achieved purely through its unique design, without the need for complex horns or any additional components. And an example for a convex ring radiator. Next. Let's see how simulations can provide valuable insights into this explanation and how well they compare to real drivers. In this profile, the dome section of the ring radiator has been removed. A simple trick to keep it fixed in the simulation is to assign it a heavy material or increase its weight significantly. It's clear that the dome section remains stationary and we'll see how this design can achieve better directivity even without the dome part. Now, let's modify the current driver to function as a traditional dome tweeter. This allows us to verify that the simulation closely matches real-world behavior, proving its reliability for designing actual drivers. After converting it into a dome tweeter, the directivity decreases significantly, and the results closely match real-world behavior. The green curve represents the off-axis response at 90 degrees in the simulation. Pay attention to the difference. For the ring radiator, the sound pressure drops by about 15 dB at 90 degrees, whereas for the dome tweeter, it only drops by 7 dB. The ring radiator offers better directivity, especially above 10,000 Hz 
along with the more extended frequency response. So, what do you prefer? Dome or ring radiator? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.